In this video, I'm going to show you how to generate AI images using Home Assistant and OpenAI. The first thing to know is that this is only available from 2023.8. So if you're watching this on its release, you might need to wait a couple of days. But otherwise, as long as you've upgraded, then you'll get this functionality available. So the first thing you're going to need to do is you're going to need to create an API key with OpenAI. And then you're going to want to set some usage limits. You're then going to want to add the integration. We're then going to show you how to generate the image. And then I'm going to go through some examples in Home Assistant of how actually to use them and set it up. I'm also going to give you a cheeky demo of ChatGPT working in Home Assistant. So let's dive in. So the first thing to note is that there is actually a cost for this. It's only relatively small though. So there's three different image sizes that you can choose from and the largest size is two cents per image. So if you're doing a lot of images, say one per hour, then that could add up to say $15 a month. But if you're only doing an image or two a day, then it's not really going to be very significant. So I've got some free trial credits that I was given. So I've got $5 free for a month. So you might get the same. So firstly, let's create an API key. All we need to do is simply press create new secret key. And then type in an optional name. So I did something like home assistant. Create secret key and then it will give you the key. Now you just need to copy this somewhere safe because it won't show you it again. Now let's take a look at the usage tab. So here it will show you how many times you've used the API. And you can see here I've also got a free trial. But now we need to set up the billing so that we can actually have a build account so that we can use the API after our free trial has run out. So we go to billing overview and you can see here set up paid account. Now that we've got a paid account and we've set up a payment method, we can go back to billing overview and then usage limits. And then here we can set how much we're prepared to spend each month. All right, so we're now done with that and we can head over to Home Assistant. So we want to head over to settings and then integrations and then we want to do add integration and then search for OpenAI. So OpenAI conversation is the one we want and as you can see it asks for an API key and that's the secret that we created a minute ago. So let's paste that in and press submit. Now that's been set up we can click into it and you can see there's OpenAI conversation here and there's a configure button. We don't need to use this for now because we're using the image functionality. This is for conversations instead. So the easiest way for us to try this out is to head over to developer tools. So we're going to go to developer tools, services, and then we'll search for open AI and you can see there's generate image. Let's just select this. And then we just type in the prompt. So this is basically what image do you want to be generated? We now just want to select the size of the image we want to generate, which has a slightly different cost for each, but they're quite similar really. So that actually took a few seconds to generate, but now we've got a URL and we can go to that URL and have a look at the image. Okay, so that image is interesting to say the least. <laughs> so let's try something a bit more sensible. Well, I have to say, I'm pretty disappointed with this image it's generated. It's quite basic, but I imagine this is going to improve over time. Also, I suspect that my prompts need to be a little bit better. So great, we've got a URL for an image, but what are we going to do with it? So in this section, I'm going to show you how to actually use that URL in Home Assistant so that you can download the image and then use it on your dashboard. So we're going to create a local folder first, so a www folder. You might have this already, but if you haven't, I'll show you how to do this. We're then going to add an integration called the Downloader Integration, which allows us to download the file to a location locally. We're then going to create an automation to do that. And then we're going to create the picture card, which is going to display that image. So the first thing we're going to want to do is go into our file editor so that we can edit configuration.yaml file. So I use Visual Studio Code, but you can use file editor if you use that. So what we want to do is we want to create a www folder inside our config folder. You might have this already, but we're going to need this because this is accessible from the Lovelace UI. So basically we're going to save the image in here. In Visual Studio Code, all you need to do is press the plus icon here and create the folder. So the next thing we're going to do is open up the configuration.yaml and then we're going to add this section here. So basically this is the downloader service and this allows you to call a service to download a file from a URL. And that's what we're going to need. So what we need to do is, is we need to set it as www so that it will download to that directory. In other areas, this folder is called local but that doesn't work for this integration, so you've got to call it this. Later on, we will reference it as local. 
So now on to creating the automation. So this is going to do a few things. So it's going to retrieve the current weather from our weather entity. It's then going to send that to OpenAI to generate the image. And then we're going to download that image into that www folder. So the first service we want is the OpenAI service, which is OpenAIConversation.GenerateImage. At the moment here it's showing it in YAML, but I'll show you in a minute how to do it not in YAML, but you will need to paste some YAML in. So this section here is the ginger code to get the weather from the entities. So you can see what I've put here is, is I've set the context of show a London based image for the weather with a person in the image wearing clothes that reflects the weather. And then I've basically said, is the sun up or not? So is it above or below the horizon? Is the weather sunny or cloudy, etc.? What's the cloud coverage and what's the temperature? I'm not sure how much of this information it actually uses to build the image, but I imagine as it gets better, it will use more of this information. Let's create a new automation from scratch so you can see how you do it. So create automation, new automation, uh, trigger could be whatever you like. So it could be when the weather state entity changes, for example, or you could just do it every hour. For now, we're going to ignore triggers and we're going to trigger it manually. So firstly, call service action, type in open AI, generate image. So what we want to do is we want to populate this prompt box last because that's going to change it to YAML instead of this nice bit here. So let's select this. Choose the image size, I'm going to stick with 512, and then the response variable. So basically what this is, this is the variable that it will store the URL in, because we're not going to need to use that later to download the file. So I'm going to call it image underscore URL. And then I'm going to post in my code here, which I'll leave in the description, and then it automatically converts it to this. You can obviously modify this prompt to your liking. So once we've got that section, we now know that it's going to return an image URL under this variable. So we now need to use that to download the file. So let's go to add another action called service. And now we want to search for downloader, download file. Likewise, we want to populate this URL box last because once I put the code in here, it will change it to a YAML format. I'm not going to define a subdirectory, but I am going to define a file name because we need it to be a static file name so that we can reference that in the picture entity card. So for overwrite, we need to make sure we tick this because we need to make sure that every time it downloads the image, it overwrites the existing one, otherwise it will fail. And now we're going to paste in the code for URL, which is simply the variable, so like this. So as soon as I've pressed paste, it pasted this into the URL. So that's our automation done. So I'm going to save that. So what I'm going to do now is delete the existing image out of the folder so I can show you working. So now press up here and do run. And we'll need to wait a few seconds for it to process. And you can see here weather.png has just appeared. So I'm now just going to go to this dashboard where I've already done it. So let's edit this. And if we go to edit, you can see I've just used the picture card. We've got forward slash local here. So you need to use local instead of www and then the name of the file. You can have tap actions so that if you press the image, then it will do something. But I haven't done that here. That's a pretty interesting image of London, actually. You can see it's got Big Ben here. It's got the sky and clouds and it's got someone wearing a hoodie but shorts, which is probably about right. I think the weather examples were much better than the other examples I tried, but I think this is going to evolve over the coming months, just like ChatGPT did. It's also great that we can do this end-to-end -end process in Home Assistant, and I think as it improves, there'll be more use cases available in Home Assistant as well. Well, that's all in relation to the image generator, but seeing as we've set up the integration, it seems silly to not try out ChatGPT. So if we go to settings and then we go to assistants, voice assistants, we need to create a new voice assistant, give it a name, open AI, and then under conversation agent, we can now select open AI conversation. We don't need to change anything else, just press create. And now let's go back to overview and then press this icon in the top right. And now we can type something in here, but before we do that, in this drop down, let's select OpenAI instead. This will now give us access to the ChatGPT API. There we go, so I've asked it when Coke Zero is created and it came back straight away. Now let's try something related to Home Assistant. Right, so that's interesting. So it's actually returned an answer of how many lights are on in Home Assistant, but it's not correct. So um, maybe there's a bit of work to go there. If we go back to the settings and then go to voice assistants, let's open up OpenAI, and then you can see there's a cog here. 
So if we press that, you can see it actually gives it a prompt to tell it what information to deal with. So in here, I'm guessing that this might change over time and we might be able to provide ChatGPT with a bit more information about our smart home. So there is a cost to using ChatGPT as well, of course, and it comes out the usage limit that we set earlier. Well, that's it for this video. So please consider subscribing if you liked it. Leave your comments down below with if you've implemented it and what you've done and if you like it or not. And thanks until next time. Bye.